in January of 2010, I was feeling done. I, my, what I was doing in life wasn't working. So I went to the woods, I got down on my knees and I surrendered and I thought, okay, before I, I said, okay, universe, before I take a swan dive off the Golden Gate Bridge, let's see what you can do. I surrendered to you. Whatever you want, anything, I don't even care anymore. Doesn't matter. Whatever it is, your will, my hands. And I heard the words, write your comedy. And I looked up, like, are you sure? And I just wrote it off. I wrote it off as just my imagination. And I kept hearing this nagging voice to write my comedy and you know, I just thought that no one makes money on comedy. I can't live on comedy. I'm not going to leave a secure business doing comedy and I couldn't do both. Um, and that December, December 10th, 2010, I had this car accident. Someone T-boned me running a red light and that forever changed the course of my life. And sometimes I do, I think, okay, well, I wasn't able to do it on my own. I literally got hit on my, I had to get, literally hit on my head to create change. And I felt called to change and I was afraid. I was afraid of the unknown, leaving a secure business. And I have this expression, if the universe wants you to make a change, he taps you, she taps you on the shoulder. If you don't listen, then you get a nudge. If still you don't heed the call, the nudge comes, turns to a shove and it continues until the two by fours come out, giving you no choice, absolutely no choice. And that actually then, <laughs> it actually happened. I had no choice. Long story short, I lost my business because of the head injury and because of the circumstances that I'm trying to let go, but the, my doctor would not send me, um, give me time off work more than a week. I called her and I told her, look, I can't look both ways, crossing a huge intersection. My vision was delayed. It was horrible. I was forgetting how to drive my car and I was walking around like a drunk sailor. I was dizzy. I was confused. I was, uh, I had a dog walking business where I go pick up dogs. I drive and pick them up, then I walk them, hike the pack of dogs on the trails, getting bumped around. And my doctor said, I can't give you more than a week off. I don't think you need to see a specialist. The chiropractor gave me, sent me to a specialist and I went back the second time saying, look, it's getting worse. Every time a dog bumps into me or pulls on a leash, which is all day, every day, all the concussion symptoms come back and it's getting they're getting worse. And he just sat back and looked at me. He was a neurosurgeon. I didn't know at the time I should have gone to a been sent to a neurologist. And he looked back he looked at me and said, um, I don't know why you're here. There's nothing I can do for you. So after these series of doctors just letting me down, telling me it's no big deal, it'll heal on its own. I pushed and I pushed for six years, I pushed through the flare ups. What now I'm finding out is um, we're actually more concussions. It wasn't until six later I realized that now they're saying after you have a concussion, anytime you have a jolt to your body or head that causes the symptoms, that's another concussion. So based on that definition, I've had about 4,000 concussions and that's why it just is plateaued where I'm okay one day and any kind of jolt to my body or head um, is sometimes very slight. My, my brain will go down and that's why I don't do videos for long periods of time because I'll be down for days or a week and on the good days, the few good days I have, I'll be catching up on food and everything and then I'm down again and I get into a cycle so I have to just stay immobile basically until it clears and once I have a big jolt then any little thing like walking brushing my teeth will cause it um, so I have to really stay down until it's out of that mode like when you have a sprained ankle you're fine then you twist it again and then you can barely walk again it's like that 
Now, I did go through a lot of rage, a lot of anger. I mean, nothing like I've ever experienced before. I've never been an angry person over the doctors. The lawyer wouldn't fight for me because the sick case was too small. The insurance fought, so... And I didn't find out until years later, after I settled, I got like, they paid for some those medical doctor bills and imaging and a few bucks, but that didn't even cover my lost wages even at all. So I used my savings to cover for lost wages. So uh, it wasn't until, uh, so this happened in December 2010, and um, it wasn't until what January 2007 March 2017 that I was actually properly diagnosed long after I settled I, I didn't know it was gonna be permanent or what feels like permanent I kept thinking it would heal and I was determined medically disabled um, they did all kinds of cognition tests and things like that so it was too late as far as getting compensation so basically what I have is that some people call it traumatic brain injury, others post-concussion syndrome. Also, it's been known as punch drunk syndrome, which is interesting because one of the symptoms I have often is I feel drunk, which I'm thinking, well, of all the symptoms in the world, uh, that's not the worst. <laughs> could be worse. You know, it could, I could have no arms and no legs. Okay, now for the woo-woo stuff. So, there was a lot of anger. I was upset. I, my life was destroyed. But then I realized, or sometimes I'll remember, that life wasn't working for me. And if it wasn't for the spiritual practice I've studied for over a decade, and I've heard stories of people who would lose, they lost their, their business, they lost their partner, they lost their house, they lost their kids, and they went into this very dark place. And it turns out the new life was something that they never even could have conceived on their own. So it took this inciting incident to get there. And then they start realizing, you know what? That life wasn't working for me, but I was in denial. I was in denial because of fears, fear of change for the unknown. I am, this is working as far as financially I was secure. My analogy for this is uh, inertia. And bodies in space will travel at the same velocity and the, in the same direction until another force gets into its gravitational field and changes its course. And I used to joke about everything I learned about humans, I learned from physics, because we tend, I feel like, I see that we do that as well. We will stay on the same course until something happens to change it, if we can't do it on our own. And that's why I tell people, if you feel called to change, do it. Do it. You can do it the easy way or the hard way. And yeah, this living with a brain injury is definitely the hardest thing I've done in my life. I had experienced in my life, and I've been through some really bad stuff. And this, when your brain's not working and you can't dress yourself, you can't feed yourself, you can't walk your dog. That's to me the scariest thing I've ever experienced. Um, nothing in my life could keep me down. I, I put myself through Berkeley. You see Berkeley, I wrote comedy, I wrote a screenplay, um, I did comedy, I did a little short, I mean, this, this is the first thing, and it's humbling. So it's definitely still, this is definitely by far the darkest time in my life, but at the same time, during the darkest time of my life, the brightest light has shone through. And I've learned so much. I've learned how to slow down. I'm having to completely redo everything the way I do, the way I function. People showed up. People I never would have expected showed up and helped me when, when my brain went down. And uh, never in my life I was able to, I've never been able to ask for help or accept help. And I still have a hard time with it, but I'm learning these things, these new, th it's like a metamorphosis. It's like. I was in a chrysalis and I'm starting to come out. I actually feel like I'm still in it. But I come out and I go in, you know, the chrysalis of the caterpillar turns into the butterfly. Um, so, yeah, people showed up and that changed me. So, all of these things would not have happened without this incident. And I tell people that are always, no matter what happens, there's always a silver lining for those who are willing to see. 
and people get upset. Some people get really defensive and they say, oh, well, what's the silver lining to this or that or my mom dying or the baby or whatever. And I say, you know, you're right, you're right. I, I can't answer that for you. Only you can answer that. And you got to get out of the small picture and get into the big picture, the universal picture of, of what's happening. Another thing, a silver lining to this was that when you have a life, I know that if I get in that same accident again, I'm not going home. It's over. My life is over. My last day could be at any time. And the thing about that is at first it's scary and then it's liberating. Then you realize, oh, you know, do what you need to do. If there's anything in the world you want to do in life, do it. But you, like I tell people, you can drink all the smoothies in the world. You can do all the yoga poses from dawn to dusk. But you never know when someone's going to run a red light and, and cause a brain injury or worse. Some even somewhat mystical things, um, I'll just say one of them was, um, I remember when, um, back in January when this all really went down and just standing in the middle of the living room and with a blank mind, I would call a blank mind. Back then there was no research, I couldn't find anything on it. So I just called it blank mind where my brain would, brain would just stop and I would be aware that I'm standing there, but that was it. And it's just scary. I'm like, I, I'm just standing there with a blank mind. Like I'm not walking. I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what to do. I call them Alzheimer's moments. But um, then I thought, you know, people have walked to the ends of the earth. People have lived in, in mountaintop caves, starving themselves, lived in poverty and, and, and starvation to get to this point. <laughs> Empty mind. All I had to do was get hit by a speeding Volvo. <laughs> All right, that's not funny to anyone but me. <laughs> when I forgot the most, one of the important parts is, so what's my channel about and what I'm trying to do with it. And um, YouTube serves two goals for me. And one is that I, I want to give back, give back to the universe. People help me out so much. I just thought, and that whole calling thing. I'm like, I just want to give back. And it's a great vehicle, you know, whether through information or inspiration or just pure entertainment. And the other goal um, is to, an attempt to generate some income for the first time since I lost my business in January of 2017. Um, it's hard to find jobs when there's days you can't get your pants on. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how many jobs require pants. <laughs> so those are my goals with the channel. It's definitely going in a direction I had not planned on, but I'm just going to let it evolve organically and, um, see my brain just stops. So I'm like, okay, I guess, I guess that thought's done. <laughs> it never used to do that. Trust me. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave a comment below. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about what it's like traveling full-time with a disability, let me know. Maybe I'll do a video on that. But I guess that's it. I'm Kelly Doyle. This is Sophie Doyle. Can you see her? Hi, baby. Thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day and follow your bliss.